Okay, welcome back and hey, thanks for watching. Did you click subscribe and click the bell so you'll see the new videos come out for Thermo? I'm putting them out pretty regular this semester, so be sure and stay notified. Okay, so today we're talking about, again, Thermo, we're talking about phase changers. And we're talking about things that go from one state to another and how, how different materials behave as they change states and how much energy it takes to get them to change states, okay? So as we know, I guess we, we should know, um, basic matter will have come in three forms, right? It will come in a solid or a liquid or a gas, okay? So we can think about these three phases here. <clears throat> and what we're talking about here is changing phase, going from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas, right? So how does that happen? Now, a lot of us know how that happens, or we've seen that happen. Another pin here. How about when you go from a uh, solid to a liquid, right? And, and it, the easiest thing to think about is just, we're going to talk about water here in a second, but just think about water. If you just, if you just uh, set a, a, a glass on the counter that was frozen, right? You'd left it in the freezer overnight and the whole thing was frozen. What would it do? Well, it would melt, right? So you have melting is typically what we call going from a solid to a liquid. How about if I go from a liquid to a solid when I put it in the freezer, what did you do? Well, I just gave it away, didn't I? Dad gum it. All right, it's called freezing. That's not a very good Z, is it? Freezing. Okay. Freezing, melting. How about from a liquid to a gas? Well, that would be, think about water, right? I put it on the stove and I boil it, right? So I have boiling. Okay, will take me from a liquid to a gas. What about gas to a liquid? Well, that is, as we know, called condensation, right? That's not very good. Okay, condensation. Now, here's one we don't see very much, but we can think of it something like dry ice, carbon dioxide, right? If you have a chunk of dry ice and you just left it out on the counter, what does it do? It goes straight from a solid to a gas. And that's called sublimation. Okay. And then you can get something to go from a gas straight to a solid, and that is called uh, deposition. This is really used in like the, um, the industry that makes microchips. Okay. So you take like a silicon wafer. And if you want to cover that wafer with some kind of substrate, what they do is they use something called physical vapor deposition, where they actually take the vapor, they lower the pressure in that chamber until that gas in there turns to a solid and basically just falls straight onto that um, silicon wafer and coats that. And so it's really used in the semiconductor industry, this deposition. You get, you get vapor, chemical vapor deposition, and you get physical vapor deposition. And so... Uh, that's where you kind of see that a lot um, come into play. So there you go. There's the, uh, the wheel of phase change. Okay. So let's talk about water. Okay. Let's talk about the phase change of water. And I've got here drawn on my graph, I've got two axes. One is temperature over here and one is energy over here. And as we know, as we add temperature to a system, we're adding energy to that system, internal energy, uh, enthalpy, right? And so what happens to, to water? Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's say we have at negative 20, we have ice, okay? As we start to raise the temp temperature, ice will turn, will, will start to uh, convert from a solid, if it's all solid. Let's say you had a, um, like I said, that frozen glass of water and you just set it on the stove and you just turn the temp temperature on, What's going to happen to that? Or you had a whole pan of water that's frozen. Well, the, as the temperature comes up, right, there is a, a point when you get a, when it gets above zero, which we know is freezing, right, at least, at least at one atmosphere, okay, Look, we're assuming everybody lives at, at sea level, okay, at zero, you start looking in the pan and what do you start seeing? You start seeing water and there's still some ice left over, but there's some water where it's changing. 
So there's a state here where you'll have a combination of those two. You'll have a solid and a liquid. Okay, you'll have ice and water. And one of the things that we'll do, which we'll talk about in an upcoming video, is during this stage here, you'll have to be able to find the quality, okay? The quality, which is typically with an X, uh, of, that, uh, of that mixture. And the quality means how much of that mixture is liquid and how much of that mixture is, so is solid, okay? Because in here, we don't know how much it is. Obviously, as I go along the line, it's getting less and less ice, more and more water, until it gets to a point where it's all water. And then what happens? I have nothing but water here. So the temperature now is coming up, coming up, coming up. It's getting hotter, 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 hotter. I'm adding energy, right? Hotter, 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 until I get to 100, which is, or 212 in Fahrenheit, but 100 C, which we know at 100 C what's going on, okay? That's when you hit the boiling point of water, okay? So the water on the stove now starts to boil, right? It's getting with it. And gas is coming off of it. You can see the steam rising off the, off the, uh, off the water. Now, if we were able to contain that whole system with the water and the, the uh, steam, again, you would see a combination of both things. There is a liquid and a gas there at the same time. And again, during this flat portion of the curve, what we're going to have to do in the future we'll do that next few videos here, is find the quality of that mixture. We'll have to find out how much, it, it, where, in, where are we in here? Uh, obviously, there's more water over here than gas, but over here, there's more gas than water because we're getting close to converting it all to steam, right? Once you get to steam, now why is this line flat here, right? There's, the temperature is not rising until all the water is gone. So I'm keep having to pour energy into this system to break all those bonds. It takes a lot of energy to break those bonds and take that liquid into a gas to get all those molecules separated and those bonds to break down. So I'm just continuing to add energy here, but the temperature doesn't change until it's all steam, right? And then I get into the superheated vapor region. I re the temperature starts to rise there, okay? So... You kind of know about this intuitively, what water does and how it behaves, and all of these different portions of this curve. Now, the, the thing about this is we can look at, uh, and also we know we have a couple things. We have the heat of fusion, okay, and that's the amount of energy that it takes um, to get this to get that completely broken down from one phase to the next, okay. So this is called the heat the heat of fusion to go from a solid to a liquid. And then we have up here the heat of vaporization to go from a liquid to a gas. And that is just the amount of heat, amount of energy that you have to add to the system. And remember, H comes from temperature rise. It comes from pressure rise as well, right? Or, or a, a volume change. So it can come from a, different, a couple of different places. Also notice that it doesn't take as much energy to uh, melt the ice into water as it does to convert all the water into steam, right? This just takes 6.01 kilojoules per mole. But to convert that same kilogram of, um, of um, water into, or same, same number of moles of water into a liquid, or into a gas rather, it takes a lot more energy to break it down here than it does to convert ice just into water. Uh, this takes a lot more energy. As a matter of fact, it's about, it's almost seven times as much energy to convert water to steam as it does to convert ice into water, okay? So, and we'll work a problem maybe next video that'll come back and we'll use this information to see, you know, exactly how much energy does it take to convert a given amount of material from this state to another state. So that'll be a good example problem. We'll work that in the next video. Okay. So let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about water. This is a phase diagram for water. I've got one for water here and I've got one for CO2 over here. Now you'll notice that they're very similar, but they are different. And let's talk about why. Okay. So I've got on one axis I've got pressure in atmospheres, right? And then on the other axis, I've got temperature in degrees C, okay? So 
as I go up in pressure, things happen. As I go up in temperature, things happen, okay? And so you have these stages where you have a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And over here, same thing. I have a solid, and the solid form of CO2 is, is dry ice, right? And then I have a liquid, and of course I have the gas phase over here. So dry ice, or dry ice, carbon dioxide can behave the same way and, and, and have all three states of matter there, okay? So as I, let's, here's one atmosphere, right? So this is what we would totally normally expect right here, right? As I go up in temperature, right? If it, as the temperature is very close to uh, zero here, right? I'm a little, I'm at zero, well, point zero one. So this line is almost vertical, okay? So maybe here's zero, right? Here's zero, whoop, uh-oh, bad line. There you go, okay? At zero, I know that I'm, that's, that's freezing, right? Anything above that, the ice goes into a liquid. Okay, then it goes all the way over to 100, right? And at 100, we know that at one atmosphere, it turns into steam. So that's kind of what we expect there. These lines are where there's an equilibrium between states, okay? Now there's one point right here, it's called the, you won't believe this, triple point, okay? And same thing over here, here he is right here. This is the triple point. And at that, at that atmospheric pressure and at that temperature, water could exist in all three states at the same time. Again, there would be, you would have some kind of quality issue there, right? To figure out what the quality was. So that's, a, that's where it can exist at, at all three states at the same time, okay? So let's say that you go to Colorado or you go somewhere, wherever you are, right? You go up in the mountains, you go to the tallest point in the mountain. Let's say you're at 10,000 feet above sea level. What happens to water, okay? Well, if you're at 10,000 feet, you have less air above your head, which means that the atmospheric pressure is going to be less, right? Lower atmospheric pressure. So if I'm at lower atmospheric pressure, I might be, I might be here on my graph, okay? So what is water gonna do here? Well, if you go up in the mountains, you'll find that water is gonna boil at a much lower temperature, okay? So this graph tells us how things behave. And this is important because what we're gonna to have to use here is, it's important when you're looking at these materials. Let's say you're looking at water. And that's one we look at a lot because we use steam for steam engines and turbines and all kinds of things, right? Is determining, when you work these, these thermodynamics problems, one of the very first things you have to do is you have to determine what state am I in? They give you, here's water, right? Okay, but at this atmospheric pressure and at that temperature, you have to determine, well, are we talking about ice? Are we talking about supercooled? Are we talking about a saturated uh, liquid? Are we talking about a superheated vapor? So you have to kind of find out which region of this graph you're living in to determine how to attack the thermodynamics problem. So these phase diagrams are very important to determine exactly what it is we're dealing with, a solid, a liquid, or a gas, okay? Now, how about this? Now, water is weird, okay? Water is weird. It's one of the strangest substances on the earth. Because, And you'll notice that this right here, what is happening to this line? Why is it tilted slightly this way, okay? Because the density of water, when it freezes, when it goes to ice, is actually less than it is when it's a solid the density of water is less as a solid than it is as a liquid. Now that's a weird material. Almost no other material behaves that way. And we see that all the time, don't we? If your pipes freeze at your house, what happens to the water? The water that used to be this big when it was liquid is now this big when it's frozen, right? The molecules are actually farther apart um, and, and, your, and your pipes broke, right? So. It's less dense as a solid than it is as a liquid. Now let's look over here at CO2, okay? At CO2, this line is actually sloped the other way because it is more, CO2 is more dense 
as a solid than it is as a liquid. And so you get this line, it's leaned the other way. So, and this graph is gonna look different. This diagram is gonna look different for every kind of material because of the molecular bonds that hold those molecules together. They all, all the different elements behave differently. It takes a different amount of energy to separate them, to break them down, to spread them apart, right? Because of those, those little covalent bonds or those, uh, uh, the bonds that we learned in chemistry, right? Uh, that are holding those together. Now let's look at let's look at CO2 at atmosphere, which is one uh, atmosphere like, again at sea level. What happens to CO2? Well, it goes from a solid dry ice into carbon dioxide, a gas. You know, if you just again, if you just lift that on your kitchen ta table, it would just turn into a gas, and you come back, and there would be nothing left there. Okay, so that's exactly how we expect that would behave because we know that in dry ice. Uh, at one atmosphere is negative 78.5 degrees C. So that's cold. Okay, so it's important to understand these phase diagrams to know where you are with your material. Are you, are you a solid? Are you a liquid? Are you a gas? Or are you a mixture of both? So when we come back next time, we'll work an example problem about these kind of topics and see if we can put this information here uh, into a thermodynamics problem. Hope that helps. See you next time.